Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and can you believe it has been two years since the PlayStation 5 launched? And during that time, we have seen loads of new games, accessories, and even software updates that have improved the user experience. But now that the hype has died down a little, and stock is nearly available in the shops, what have the last two years actually been like? Well, let me start with the elephant in the room, and that's the stock issues. For some of you, you've been fortunate enough to have been using it since launch, so two whole years of worry-free gaming. But for many others, the lack of stock has meant that getting a PS5 has proven difficult, and even expensive if you turn to the scalper prices. And it's really only been within the last month or so that stock appears to be ready available in the shops. And that means you can walk into a local store and literally buy one. And that's what I did back in December when I picked up a second PS5 as I was constantly moving mine between two rooms. But I think the lack of stock and of course the scalper prices will leave a lasting memory for many of us. But hopefully moving forward this will no longer be an issue and that's with thanks to Sony's recent press release. Now Sony did also announce that they very recently passed 30 million sales of the PlayStation 5, and that is absolutely huge. But I do wonder how many they would have sold if it wasn't for the stock issues. Oh, and if you're in the UK, the console prices did increase last year by £30. This was only applied to a handful of countries and regions, so not everyone has been affected. But for us it is now £480 for the disc version. Now let me know if you already have a PlayStation 5, or who's still trying to get one today. Okay, and over the last two years, we have seen some awesome new games released on the PlayStation 5. Games like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, and Kena Bridge of Spirits. We've had Horizon Forbidden West, which was a worthy sequel to Zero Dawn, and this game looks absolutely stunning. I did actually complete the story, but I'm yet to go back and get the Platinum. Then we had Gran Turismo 7, which I enjoyed a lot, and Stray, which was a brilliant game. We even got a remake of The Last of Us Part 1. I wasn't sure we needed this at the time, but it didn't stop me from replaying it again and getting the plat. Plus, this looks incredible, a huge step up from the PlayStation 4 version. And towards the end of 2023, we of course got God of War Ragnarok, which is without doubt my favourite release in the last two years. The story is incredible, and visually it's stunning. And when you factor in the hardware integration, such as the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers, it is a very immersive game. In fact, any of the new games that do adopt the controller's features completely transform the gameplay, and it feels weird playing games that don't support these features. But with that said, we've not seen many PS5 exclusives, and what I mean by that is they are also available on the PlayStation 4. For most, that's a good thing, especially with these stock issues, but as games are still being developed for both consoles in mind, there's a chance that these games will be held back ever so slightly. Of course, the PS5 versions will look and play smoother with an increased frame rate and resolution, but it will be great to see more games that are developed exclusively for the PlayStation 5. So you finally got your PlayStation 5 and you're thinking, I could do with some accessories. Well, there have been loads of third-party ones over the last couple of years, but it is great to see that Sony have released some official ones. And when the console first launched, we had the white console, controller, charge and dock, and headset, as well as the remote control and camera, which I don't think anyone actually bought, did they? Well, since then, we've had seven different controllers released, including the Midnight Black, Cosmic Red, and two of my favourites, the Grey Camouflage and the God of War Ragnarok. This is their first limited edition controller, but hopefully the first of many. It would be awesome to see new controllers released alongside upcoming games. You know, games like Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. Now, we never saw a Pro Controller on the PS4, at least not an official one from Sony, but they have of course announced the Edge Controller which launches later this month. This will give us loads of extra features that the standard controller cannot do, such as adjustable triggers, mappable back buttons, and swappable thumbsticks. How this will compare to other Pro Controllers that we've seen from places like Scuff, only time will tell, but it is great to see Sony offering us something like this. Then we have the swappable console covers, which can completely transform the way your PS5 or your setup looks. In the first year, loads of you, including myself, were using third-party plates, but Sony very quickly brought out plates of their own, and we now have a total of seven different colours to choose from. Removing them is a case of simply sliding the existing plates off and pushing the new ones on, and voila, you've just got yourself a whole new look. Although there are loads of colours to choose from, there aren't yet any game-focused designs like we saw for the Ragnarok controller. And Sony also released the Pulse 3D headset in a few different colours, as well as an in-zone headset that many of you picked up instead. This was aimed more so at PC gaming, but it is still compatible with the PlayStation 5. Of course, then we have PSVR 2, which launches in February 23, and this is something I'm really hyped for. I actually pre-ordered this back in November alongside the Horizon Call of the Mountain bundle, but I am looking forward to seeing what other games we're going to see throughout this year. And as I recently picked up the MetaQuest 2, I'm also interested to see how it compares to that. But one thing to note though, which is a little disappointing, is there's no backwards compatibility, so all of those PlayStation 4 VR games won't work on the new version. And Sony did announce at CES 2023 that a new controller is on the horizon. It's called the Project Leonardo controller, which is a highly customizable accessibility controller kit. This will be quite literally a game changer for many. 
Now there are of course two versions of the PS5 to choose from. We have the disc version and the digital only. I opted for the disc version for both of my consoles, even though I buy 99% of my games from the store. And that's just because I do buy the odd collector's edition. Although the funny thing is the Ragnarok Jotner edition came with a steel book but no disc inside. Performance wise, well the PS5 has not let me down yet. It does an awesome job of displaying 4K content as well as up to 120Hz. So games like Spider-Man you can opt to either prioritise the resolution or the frame rate, or even combine the two with the Performance RT mode. And with the addition of VRR which we got in the first year, it has allowed games to run far smoother with the support of a variable rather than a fixed frame rate. And then one of the biggest requested features that we saw only added in the last year was 1440p support. This gives gamers the option to run their console at 1080p, 4K and now 1440p, and this is ideal for a lot of monitor users. The only issue is you cannot run 1440p and VRR at the same time, it's either one or the other. Unless of course you've got a monitor that accepts a 4K resolution and then you can downscale it to 1440p. Storage wise it still comes with an 825GB internal SSD, of which only 667GB are usable. Fortunately you can either plug in an external SSD via USB, or with thanks to the update that we saw in the first year, you can install an internal SSD. This will work alongside that 825GB drive, essentially doubling or even quadrupling your storage. I initially installed a 2TB drive, but then I increased that to 4TB on my main console, and even that is taking a hammer in from the games that I'm playing. I think for most users the standard internal storage is fine for about 7 to 8 games. Now although the PS5 hasn't undergone any changes to its appearance, Sony have made two iterations already, giving it some slight tweaks internally. Comparing the latest version to the launch model, these include a 600 gram weight reduction, a smaller heatsink and changes to the internal layout of some of the elements. On the face of it though, other than the model number change on the box, you would never know. But now that I've had both of the original and the newer version consoles, the only difference that I've noticed is the new one is definitely quieter when running. Though this could be down to the fact that the fans on my older model need cleaning, so I do need to check this out. But like with any of these games or consoles, you do need a TV or a monitor that supports it. If you're using an old TV or monitor that's 720 or even 1080p, you're not really going to get the most out of the PS5. However, comparing the load times and the noise levels of the PS5 to the PS4, you will still see a noticeable difference anyway. On the whole, the UI and home screen looks very similar to launch, but we have had some tweaks and improvements along the way. Small edits to the UI so you know if you're playing a PS4 or a PS5 game, the editable navigation bar across the bottom and the party chat improvements. Even the trophy list has had an update. As if you remember at launch, the cards were horizontal and although looked nice, they were a real pain to navigate. But then that was updated within the first 6 months or so to a vertical list instead. And a big one is the introduction of game lists. It's similar to the folders that we had on the PlayStation 4 but not quite as good. But even so, it allows you to organise your games into lists so you can find them a lot easier than you could before. So whether that's into categories or the games you're currently playing. We've also seen PlayStation Plus has been updated over the last 6 months, and essentially it's combined PS Plus and PS Now into a 3 tier offering. There's the Essential Plan which is basically the old PS Plus, that's with your downloadable monthly games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage and multiplayer access. The Extra Plan gives us the same as Essential as well as a catalogue of 400 PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games. I think for most this plan will be the sweet spot, as the games you're getting at the price are really impressive. Then the most expensive plan is Premium, which also unlocks the PlayStation 3 game streaming, time limited game trials and a catalogue of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 and PSP games. I am on the Premium plan as I had a few years of PS Now and PS Plus already stacked, so when this new offering came in it automatically upgraded me. But if I had to choose again I would go for the extra plan. As for upcoming games for PlayStation, we've got a huge list of games that's worth getting excited about. Now not all of these are exclusive to the PlayStation 5 or even PlayStation, but we've got games like Forspoken, Dead Space, Hogwarts Legacy and a Horizon Call of the Mountain, as well as Dead Island 2, Peppa Pig, Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. If you already have a PS5, well 2023 is going to be a great year for gaming. And if you're still looking to buy one, well you've got all of those games to look forward to, as well as a massive library of games to catch up on. Oh and don't forget, you'll get to play all of the previous games like Days Gone, God of War and The Last of Us through the PS Plus Collection Bundle, so this is awesome for any PS5 owner as you've got a huge library of games to play. Now we are only 2 years in, but the questions and the rumours keep popping up, which is when will we see a pro or a slim version of the PlayStation 5? Well I think for most the PS5 is doing just fine and we don't really need a new console, so maybe late 2024, and the slim probably late 2023 to early 2024. But that's just going by the recent rumours and following the life cycle of the PlayStation 4. 
Now, having used the PS5 for the last two years, what are my overall thoughts? Well, for me, it's been a very reliable, fast, and enjoyable console to own. I mean, the fact that I bought a second one shows how much I like it. We've had some great games to play so far, with loads more on the horizon for 2023. Pair that with the PlayStation VR 2, the new DualSense Edge controller, and loads of colourful accessories, it feels like a good time to own a PS5. So congratulations to Sony for two years, and here's to the next of many more. And if there's a game or an accessory that you're looking forward to in 2023, just let me know below. Now drop a PlayStation 5 in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my OLED gaming monitor video next, as it covers the new 27-inch OLED from LG. And I also wanted to say a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So Squarespace allows you to create amazing websites and gives you the tools to connect with your audience. You can also generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send emails and leverage audience through the insights, all in one easy to use platform. You could create a community of your own through the commenting system, including replies and likes, as well as publishing blogs and creating a powerful e-commerce site. These third-party tools will allow you to manage inventory, promote products, and even streamline your bookkeeping and accounts. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash spawn point to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Well, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, sub, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.